Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. The purpose of our organization is to operate for the highest good of all and to implement and demonstrate a detailed plan for global transformation. The way that we're doing that is through open source project launch blueprinting plans for complete sustainable civilizations that address physical sustainability and emotional sustainability as the foundations for simultaneously addressing everything that the world is going through right now. Crime, poverty, health, starvation, lack of ed quality education, all of these things put together in one place. And we're doing this because time has come. We have uh, access through the internet to the world's population, or at least the world's population with an internet connection, and uh, access to virtually limitless information now. And so we're bringing together the people that really want to work together and create a world that works for everybody and that see that we can do this because we have the technology, we have the resources, and we have enough people now willing on this planet to dedicate their lives to creating solutions to all of these problems. And not just one or two or three or four, not as a bandage, but as a complete comprehensive solution to everything put together in one place working together to address the very foundations of why these problems exist and how to solve them permanently and positively for everyone. So this is what we're up to. This is our weekly progress update talking about our progress for the week of November 11th, 2013. This is our weekly update number 38. Uh, we've been at this, well, I've been at this full time now for three years, but we've been doing weekly progress updates for uh, 38 weeks. So let's jump into it. The format of these updates is always the same. I go through a bullet point list of everything that we've accomplished that our team has accomplished in the last week, and then I'll come back around and I'll talk a little bit more in depth on each one of those points. And if you'd like to see complete details, including images, the this last week's exports, as far as uh, all the detailed images and things like that from SketchUp, the 3D images that I'm going to talk about, as well as uh, the Education for Life program uh, that I'm going to talk about, all that stuff, as well as links to all the open source and free shared content, complete details on everything that we're doing. There's always a companion written blog, and you can go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash one dash community dash blog, and you can visit our blog or just click on the link at the top of our website there and you can go to our blog and you can see all these weekly updates and see our progress as we've continued. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, if you click in the uh, about information, you'll see that there's a link there that will also link you directly to the blog related to this uh, update. So let's jump into it. Uh, this last week, starting off with the Education for Life program, uh, we've got lesson plan one is done behind the scenes. And uh, we started creating the mind map image that goes along with that. We picked out all of the different icons and all the images and stuff that go together with that. We're just putting it together now in Photoshop. So there'll be a visual representation to go along with the entire web page that's dedicated to that first lesson plan. Uh, we have also um, finished our research behind the scenes for law and psychology sections of the social sciences subject outline. So the complete subject of social sciences outline that we're putting together. I'll talk about that in a minute. We have our Xenopini 2 plants are done. The Zen Aquapini 2 plants are completely done and up on the website now, which completes our phase one food infrastructure. Um, so, which includes, uh, you know, large scale Aquapini, Wallapini 1, 2, and 3, and Xenopini 1, Xenopini 2, 6 food infrastructures. We're now done with that. Uh, we have finished our, or we're now in the process of doing our final food forest edits and starting to transfer over the food forest um, plants details over onto the food forest page. If you want to see that work in progress, you can go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash food dash forest. Um, also, we've got our SketchUp plant references done behind the scenes. We need to add in all the common names and all that, so that is now done. We've also got our Earthbag Village in 3D. We've added in the railings as well as the uh, toilet and shower dome doorways all in 3D. And so the central ring of the Earthbag Village is really coming along, almost finished. And then uh, the Straw Bale Village now is coming along. The recreation space details are now done. We've added in additional stairways. Um, the shared kitchen area has been detailed out and outlined. More landscaping has been done with that all in CAD, thanks to the amazing work of Dave uh, Wallen. So, and then uh, also the Sego Center is progressing. So Sego Center Duplicable City Hub 
The second floor has been redesigned in the dining dome. Uh, we've done some touch-ups on the kitchen counters. We're at, we've added in or started adding in all the stringers on the stairs. We've put in uh, additional storage underneath the stairways. And so uh, we have a great 3D export on that, which you can check out on our blog as well. Pictures are up there. Take a look. And also related to the Sago Center, uh, thanks to the work of Ryan Barreto, we have draft number two or three of the music for the Sago Center. So custom music that's being designed for the rollout of the Sago Center in 3D so we can show how that's all developed and evolved in 3D and so we're posting that as well is on the uh, blog if you'd like to listen to that music there's some changes and stuff that are going to be made to it but it is just some really beautiful stuff that we're going to uh, incorporate into the visual imagery that we're creating and then uh, last but not least we updated our logo in this last week um, we made some changes to the logo which dropped the yin and yang symbol off of our logo and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that now as I go wrap around so that's our accomplishments for this last week and uh, continue to move forward and now I'll talk a little bit more in detail about all of those things that we've accomplished um, you know we talk about how we're creating a detailed plan for global transformation and that detailed plan is designed to address simultaneously address all of the aspects of uh, all the challenges that humanity is currently facing and will predictably continue to face if a comprehensive solution is not implemented. And this is what we're here to do. We've looked at it all and we've said, you know what? Addressing hunger is one step. Addressing poverty is another step. Addressing the fact that a quarter of the Earth's population does not have energy, that's a step. Addressing the fact that uh, most kids nowadays are not getting a quality education, that's another step. Uh, addressing the economic situation in the world right now, well, that's another step for people that already have enough food and housing, you know, addressing housing, well, that's a step. And then, well, how do we address crime? How do we address um, what's going on right now with health care and with our health system and just the health of the human population right now? How do we address all of those things? Comprehensively. Our answer to that is that we address them all simultaneously. That we take a look at what's going on with society right now, that's what's going on with our civilization, with our species, and we say, well, if we were really to operate for the highest good of all, if we were really to look at what we could do to best address all these things simultaneously, what would that look like? Not a fix or an adaptation, but a complete new design for living that takes everything that's working. So it's not new in that it's unheard of. It's new in that it's taking everything that's working from around the world and it's putting together in one place in an open source and free shared model with complete tools, tutorials, resources, blueprints, everything that people need, including a living demonstration that people can visit and experience, and then take every aspect of that model that they want to duplicate, that they want to incorporate into their own lives, to take every aspect of that model with them, and to be able to access it from anywhere in the world via the internet, and to be able to evolve that through a global collaborative and a global cooperative of people that are giving us feedback and also launching similar models such that the whole thing is designed so that it can be maximally adapted and changed to fit the lifestyles and ways that people want or to be implemented either as individual components or as complete self-replicating teacher demonstration hubs, communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world that simultaneously address all of the things that our planet is going through right now creating solutions that provide a better way of living for the individual, for their community, for their country, and for the planet, all as a whole. That's what we're doing. And so every week we're making progress. Right now, you know, we have one aspect of it that's part of the highest good society component, which is the Education for Life program that we're really developing uh, comprehensively. Once we get on the property, we'll demonstrate social architecture and the recreation models, and, you know, we continue to develop out the highest good nonprofit and for profit business models. So everything that we're doing is duplicable, including our nonprofit organization. So people can set these up around the world, start teaching more and more people how to do what it is that we're doing. But each week we're reporting in on the education program which has been developing now for a year and a half. We've been putting just consistent work into that. It's coming along really beautifully. And then of course food, energy and housing infrastructure are big aspects of it. And how do we build complete infrastructure in a way that we can establish complete cities, villages, and communities that are self-sufficient, self-sustainable, and teach the rest of the world how to duplicate any one of those components so we can revolutionize the way that people look at their food, so we can revolutionize the way that people look at their housing, so we can completely transform the way that people look at energy in a way that's going to 
address the health problems that are being developed because our food and air and water quality are going down, continuing to uh, get worse, and to provide a solution that not only provides an individual solution, but actually addresses the way that society looks at food so that we can change the industry as a whole, so people can be more interested in higher quality food, so that people will say, hey, I want more variety in my diet. I want more nutritious food in my diet. And so people can start businesses, small businesses that provide that. And so there's an economic element there as well. Or so people can start community-based education programs and come together and spend more time with their kids. You know, because we've shown that this addresses crime. You know, if you have kids that have more hands-on parents, they've shown that that decreases crime rates and increases uh, test scores, these kinds of things. So let's put all that together. And so that's what we're doing. So this last week, I mentioned that uh, the Education for Life lesson plan uh, number one is done. Behind the scenes, we've done all the research for how, and this lesson plan is taking everything, uh, math, English, science, social science, all those things, and teaching them in the context of time. So the theme is time, and then we're teaching all of those different subjects to any age that you would want to teach to, everywhere from grade school and preschool up to college level and, and higher education within the context of that theme and then building a model so that you could have a multi-age classroom where every student is learning at their ability and being challenged within the environment and there's a big connection between all these different subjects that you're learning multiple things at one time. Very advanced way of looking at education uh, that comes from studying the most, um, well, I'd say, I'd say the most transformational education programs currently in existence on this planet. We studied, Wal studied Waldorf, we studied uh, Regio, we studied ORF, we studied the Intelligences, we studied Study Tech, we studied uh, Montessori, we studied uh, Bloom's Taxonomy, we studied uh, Regio, did I mention that one? All of these, we studied all these different education programs and then we studied how people like to learn. Like how do adults like to learn? Is it from sitting and studying a book? Not really. Some, but mostly not. It's really hands-on learning where there's a big, there's a purpose to it. There's a big why. It's connected to information that's usable and in, in, instantly implementable into people's lives, either to, independent of their age, either as little kids or as full-grown adults. It's useful information. And so that's what we're creating this education program for. And so we've got the basics of the first mind map is done. We'll finish the rest of it this week, but you can see uh, where it is right now. We'll post it as part of the is posted as part of the uh, written blog, and um, and uh, and we've done the research behind the scenes. So we've got that lesson plan done. We've got that mind map done. And we're starting to put together the first page. And every one of these lesson plans, which represents one week of lessons, will have its own page on the website. And we've got 33 of them outlined already. And so this is the first one that's coming together. It takes the longest because we're looking at the formatting and how to make the information maximally usable. But it is turning out beautifully. Our team has just done phenomenal work. Uh, website is looking really beautiful. The imagery is looking fantastic. The amount of research that's gone into this is uh, well over a year and a half of research now that's gone into all these details, bringing it all together. And so it's actually starting to come together into something that will be usable either in a home environment, it'll be usable in traditional environments, it can be used uh, as a standalone lesson plan and in in not even in a homeschooling or a community-based environment, but just with parents that want a cool way to teach their kids something really, really fun, um, there you go. It can be used as a lesson plan at a party, honestly. You could put it together and you could take different components of this and create it in such a way that it could be used just in a recreational environment if you want it and that's what it's all about we want to make education so fun that kids don't know that they're learning but so effective that they can jam on the SATs and ACTs that they'll have the knowledge and skills to be able to not just get into college but to excel to truly thrive in life or if they don't want to go into college to go directly into the workforce and have usable app applicable skills and this combines in with the complete teacher demonstration community village and city model in that the entire community, village, and city is a teacher demonstration model. It's a teacher demonstration model for visitors. It's a teacher demonstration model for everybody that lives there. And of course, it's a teacher demonstration model for the kids. And so the entire environment is created as a learning cooperative and collaborative environment that shares everything that it does, everything that it produces, as an ongoing solution-based thinking organization working on all of the challenges that society and our civilization right now is is dealing with indefinitely it's flexible it's adaptive 
It's designed open source and free shared so that people that have different versions or different ideas of how it can be applied can take those ideas and build off of the initial infrastructure and evolve it in any direction that they want. And so this is what we're working on right now. Education for Life program is one big open source free shared fun part of that. And uh, so we've completed that lesson plan, uh, all that research. We've got the image that is starting to come together now in Photoshop, that mind map that will be a visual way to look at that and see exactly how to interact with all the information with the bigger picture information and um, and we've got uh, and we're starting to put together the, the first web page of that lesson plan what it'll look like which will be the template for all the rest of the lesson plans and so we'll start with a complete six months of lesson plans uh, for the property so that we can roll out the whole thing have our whole six months developed and ready to rock and roll on the property and then we'll continue to develop after that so we can have years of lesson plans that will be put in place and ready to be implemented and you know it'll continue indefinitely like I said the whole idea is that all of this is meant to be open source and free share forever so along with that also and the education for life program um, we finished the law and psychology research which is the there's a couple more we've got uh, I think humanities and something else that we're still going to research for the social sciences um, subject outline which is a a big circular outline for the complete study of social sciences covering everything from government to um, obviously psychology and law and those aspects history world history world events that kind of stuff all that put together in one subject so that it can be a reference point for all these lesson plans so that everything is covered so somebody wanted to really have a truly expert education in social sciences that process can start from preschool because we have a model that addresses that and really starts teaching it in a fun way that can also progress all the way through higher level learning so that an adult could engage with this in this process. It could be part of the entire community model so an adult could engage in pieces of this if they wanted to as part of the social architecture and help to develop it for other adults or for super sharp kids. So that's coming along. Uh, I talked about Zenopini 2. Plants are done and up on the website. This is the culmination of another months and months, I would say probably, oh, probably a year of work at this point. I mean, I would say collectively, probably a year of work is now done. We have all of our food infrastructure is up on the website as far as the phase one building food infrastructure. And now we're working on all the outdoor planting details. So for Zenopini 2, we have, to, for the phase one food infrastructure, we have large scale aquapini. We have the Wallapini 1, 2, 3, Zenopini 1, and Zenopini 2. And all of these details are now up on the website. The complete planting details where you can purchase all the plants, um, descriptions of all the plants, images of all the plants, uh, planting guidelines for every single plant, cultural considerations for every single plant, where you can get more information for every single plant. And it's almost 300, I think it's over 300 different plants that are on that page, as well as attracting pollinators information, all of those details are now done on the website and we're moving on to the food forest uh, edits and all of those the research and everything is done on the food forest behind the scenes and all the pictures are edited behind the scenes and so now we're doing the final behind the scenes edits for all those food forest plants which is another 300 plants 290 something plants and then we're going to transfer all those over the website and that will complete all of our food infrastructure uh, other than the aquaculture we're now working on aquaculture as well and so uh, the aquaculture that we have decided on though could change but we're pretty clear in working with our aquaculture consultant and our, aquap our, um, our uh, aquaponics uh, consultant as well and then our botanist is working on this and now uh, taking taking the details to the next level is what are we going to offer for the aquaculture which we're going to start with catfish uh, crawfish and uh, freshwater mussels that's the plan so we're doing all the research behind the scenes for that and along with finishing up the food forest stuff and once that's done we are totally complete uh, with our food infrastructure and then we're just working out the purchasing details for the actual infrastructure so and on that note so the actual infrastructure the structures the wallapinis and the aquapinis are now starting to go into CAD thanks to the amazing work of David Sweet who is one of our news partners uh, architect who is now converting all of our food infrastructure drawings and all those details and all the planting plans all that stuff is now going into CAD and um, you can see images on the blog of that conversion you can see it before and after of the basics of that starting to go in we're doing a roof redesign on that we finished our um, our research on materials and so all this stuff is now coming together for the food infrastructure along with that also in the food category is that we have uh, we finished our SketchUp plant reference 
So we're doing all this stuff in 3D and SketchUp so that anybody can access the information and to be able to modify these files once they're done. And along with that, we realize that we need really good representations of the plants that we're going to be planting so that people have an idea of what the landscaping is going to look like and how what the plants are going to look like inside these structures, have an idea of how amazing these structures are going to be because they're all part of our open source botanical garden model. And the open source botanical garden model is purpose to increase biological diversity, to support biological diversity and nutritional diversity for people in a way that they can build it in their backyard and be part of a global collaborative for really studying plants at the level that we're capable of now that technology and information transfer has gotten to the evolved state that it has and is only going to increase. And so we're building an open source botanical garden model that goes along with that so that instead of having people just building greenhouses in their backyard, they can build complete aquapinis that grow foods from around the world and that they could share with their neighbors, that they could sell at local, local farmers markets, that they could turn into an actual business and sell to grocery stores if there's enough interest for these kinds of things, and that they can enjoy as a really beautiful space that's far beyond anything that they could create with tomato plants and green beans. So uh, if you want to see the diversity of those plants that we're talking about, stuff that's been studied from around the world and brought together in these environments that are specifically purposed, six different environments purposed to grow six different types of plants and a diversity of plants from around the world, look at our food infrastructure. Check it out. Take a look. Go to the blog and click on the links there for the details of everything that we're growing. Very, very cool. And the SketchUp plant reference that we've created is also... Um, designed to uh, to give us the the visual pieces in an easy to reference way and our botanist has looked at all the details and said well you know there's not that many SketchUp plants out there we don't have the resources to create individual plants for the huge ridiculous diversity of stuff that's out there so he looked at it with his expertise with decades of expertise and said you know you could substitute this 3d plant for all these plants you could substitute this 3d plant for all these plants and so we're creating a referenceable database so that people that are creating stuff to go, okay, you know, unless you're an expert and zooming in and they don't have enough detail to see us anyway, and looking at actual leaf shapes and stuff like that, you could resize these plants to represent all these different things. Like this tree would work for this and this and this and this and this. And so we've got that done behind the scenes and uh, we'll get it up on the website here within the next few weeks. We're working on the food forest first and then we'll probably get that up um, on the website as soon as we're done with that. Or maybe we'll do it at the same time. We'll see. Also, I said that we've got um, railings. Great work of Devin Porter has uh, put railings in, working with the team and, to, and, and uh, the different framing around the shower domes as, as well as the toilet domes, as well as building the stem walls, all in 3D for the Earthbag Village. So Earthbag Village demonstrates maximum affordable housing that can be built anywhere in the world to address the issues of uh, housing that is shoddily built and is being destroyed pretty easily by natural disasters. Imagine if you could go in and build sustainable infrastructure that's more tornado resistant, it's more flood resistant, it's more um, typhoon resistant, it, is, it lasts for hundreds of years, these things are practically indestructible, and they're super, super affordable. And so we're creating open source blueprints for that as well, and these things can be built anywhere in the world just by shipping the earth bags and then mixing it with dirt. Dirt is your primary building uh, material, just some amazing, amazing stuff. And so the 3D designs for all that stuff it's coming together and doing it in 3D is important because now we're starting to look at plumbing and we're starting to think about gray water processing and you know healthy waste processing that kind of stuff is too also as well as part of all of this so that's coming along thanks to the work of Devin Porter thanks to the work of Dave Wallen uh, the Straw Bale Village is also coming along in CAD we've added in the recreational central shared recreational space details you can see pictures on the website of this additional stairways have been added in details to the shared kitchen have been added in and more landscaping external landscaping we're looking at uh, fire escapes that kind of stuff all those details are coming together in uh, CAD and the Sago Center duplicable city hub is also moving forward and so this last week in the Sago Center um, we finished up the final details within the dining dome which will feed 150 to uh, 150 to 200 people at a time, saves huge resources, super efficient, saves resources in building materials, saves resources in ongoing resources in food, as far as how food is prepared, time resources and energy resources, as well as actual uh, food resources. You know, you'll use less food in this type of environment, and there'll be less waste in this type of environment. And so the kitchen details are coming along. We finished up 
the different uh, countertops had to be fixed. We were moving around some racks. We had to flip a door. We had to put in a cleaning closet in there with a floor-based um, mop sink. All that stuff is now done, and there's pictures up on the website of that, as well as uh, more work on stairs. So now we're working on the stairs, and we're working on the elevator to get up to the fourth floor, and putting in the stringers and all that work, thanks to the amazing work of Carl Harris uh, is doing that. And we've added storage underneath the staircase in the dining dome, and so um, all those details are coming along. And, uh, and then along with that, when all this is done, we're going to show people how it evolved in 3D, with a video, with like a three to four minute video that will show the 3D process, which is hundreds of hours of work, uh, thousands if you count uh, if you count all the design time and everything else that went into it, from drawings, taking it to 3D and complete open source and free shared building plans. We're going to show all that in a video, and Ryan Beretta is creating custom music for us, and so he's an amazing composer, does some beautiful work, and so the uh, 1.0 version, well, no, nah, it's not 1.0. Anyway, the music that he's got, there's some changes and stuff he said that he's still going to make on that. But the version of that music, uh, the first version or the most recent version of that music is also posted in the blog. So check it out. Really beautiful. You can listen to it right there on the, on the website and hear it. And we'll be creating a whole video with that in the very near future. And, uh, and then last but not least, we updated our logo. I mentioned that we, um, we removed the uh, yin and yang symbol from the logo because we had enough comments from people that said, hey, you know, that might be misinterpreted as a religious symbol. And yin and yang, for those who know, is not a religion, it's a philosophy of uh, balance. And so originally that was a part of our logo because we really liked the fact that it represented everything. We thought it was all encompassing. But at the same time, we don't really want to turn people off that might not understand what yin and yang is. And so um, we changed the logo. We, we eliminated the yin and yang symbol from our logo to be more representative of the highest good of all people and, uh, and, and that we're really uh, an organization of non-ideology and wanting to um, connect with as many people as possible and uh, to appeal to the largest audience possible so that people can really access the information and use it in a way that works. So um, that's our update for November 11th, the week of November 11th, 2013. And I will say, as always, um, thank you for following our project. Uh, the number one way that people can help us right now if you'd like to help us, we're looking for that one person that would like to invest in one community, uh, either as a donation or investing in us to help us get the property that we have been working with for the last three years off the market so we can share the location. So if you or somebody you know knows somebody that could help us with that, we're looking for that. And I always link to our funding page so you can see exactly how much funding we're looking at and what that funding will go towards uh, in the written blog. Take a look at it. And of course, we're always looking for new pioneers. We're always looking for new partners and consultants. Uh, we just welcome a new pioneer, Tatiana, to the team. You can read her bio on our blog as well or on our team page. Uh, super excited to bring her on board. And if you're somebody that might want to move to the property and help us build global transformation, create this detailed plan, and to live the life of sharing, uh, global cooperative, of transformation and solution-based thinking forever, if that's your idea of a good time, if you want to join a team that's making a difference, that's being the change that we want to see in the world, we invite you to send us an application. You know, or if you're somebody that'd like to build one somewhere else, we have a satellite pioneer member as well, uh, membership option as well. And uh, of course, there's always openings for consultants and partners too. So with that, I will say thank you. Thank you as always for sharing our information uh, through the social networks. Thanks for the emails that we get, all the messages that we get, and for all your support as always. Until next week, have yourself a great week. Thanks for following One Community and your support.